Welcome to Cosplay Land. I am Alice, and today I am going to be making a cosplay of your favorite doll, Barbie. For this project, I am going to be using lightweight cotton fabric, an invisible zipper, and lots of beads for all the details. And of course, I am no blonde. And for the record, this is the real me. I don't like pink, I do not wear pink, and you will never, ever find me wearing this kind of outfit in the real world. But here we are, making a Barbie dress, because why not? Now, this dress is both quite easy and quite challenging, because I am going to be using this checkered fabric, which is super cool, and I need to make sure all my squares are straight when I cut them, as well as centered, so as you can tell, this can be a little bit of a difficult thing to do. I started by cutting my skirt, and I recommend you to cut the whole length of fabric you have to save some extra time in sewing, and also because it's better to have a little bit of extra than just to be a little bit short. This pattern on the fabric is particularly easy to cut straight, however, I recommend you to cut each layer individually to make sure the layer underneath does not end up looking a bit wonky. Once we have the skirt cut, you can use the rest of the fabric to cut the pieces of your bodies and notice the pieces for the straps are cut on the bias, that is, at a 45 degree angle from the border of your fabric. This makes them slightly stretchy and they will adapt better to your body. For this project, I will be using my rotary cutter and weights to cut the pieces. I find this method more accurate and quick, but feel free to use fabric scissors and pins if that is what you got at hand. I sometimes use cats as well, but my cat was being a bit camera shy today. Also, don't forget to draw the darts of your bodies on both sides. With all the pieces cut, it is time to assemble the dress. For the bodies, I first pinned my darts at the waist and sides so I could sew them together. A nice trick is to tie the end of your thread at the end to get a very crisp finish. Then I sew my back pieces together. And before I carry on, I made sure all my tabs and seams were pressed properly. It was now time to sew all the pieces together. And also, to repeat everything for the lining. For the straps, I cut a rectangular piece of fabric on the bias and folded it in half. And I used a loop turner to turn them inside out.
and before I carried on with the lining, I pinned them to the front and back facing down. It was time to sew the lining around the neck area. fabric on the corners and cut notches around the curved area so it is easier to turn the fabric. If you pull at the straps, it will be super easy to turn it. And you can now iron it all flat. Let's move on to the skirt. I marked all my pleats on my skirt. Just make sure you mark them at the top and at the bottom of your fabric. Then I carefully marked each pleat on the skirt with my iron, trying to match the notches at the top and at the bottom. With the pleats marked, it was much easier to fold my skirt into box pleats by making the ironed parts meet at the middle of each panel and hiding the excess behind the pleat. And with the main pieces done, it was time to join them together, making sure I started in the middle. Yeah, sure, that is the middle, for sure. I paid special attention to each square and made each one of them match as best as I could. Of course, this may not be always possible as some of them will be just half squares and depending on your size it will vary a little bit. And for the final pleat, I folded it so there would be a pleat at the center back as well. You should have some excess fabric at the back that will fit differently depending on your size. I just made sure it looked good at the back as I was more concerned to get all the squares matching than just getting a perfect ratio of pleats. Wanna hear something funny? That's the center. And that's the center of the skirt. I put it one way off, so I need to just redo everything again. And while I was fixing the skirt, I also decided to move my dot so it would match my squares. If you sewed it all correctly, you should have something looking like this. And if you didn't, don't worry, we are going to hide it all with a belt. The belt is just a rectangle of fabric with interfacing in the middle, to make it a bit stiffer. And I decorated a regular buckle with some half pearls I had around. It 
least a touch at the back with a piece of velcro. Because we all know how Barbies work, they use velcro. Time to attach the invisible zipper. Mine looks a bit weird because I like ironing the teeth flats first so I can sew it closer to the edge. I just pin it in place, ready to sew it. And to make the other side match, I just mark the important folds before I mirror them on the other side. I just love when zippers line up. For a neat finish, I placed my lining on top of the zipper and I sewed it again. Then I just had to turn my fabric and the zipper was magically sandwiched between both layers. I also joined the remaining open side of the skirt. And just needed to hide all the ugly edges inside the lining. Of course, I did it by hand. Because I, I am crazy and I like doing it by hand, okay? Don't judge me. The ribbon is just a bunch of pieces sewn together and turned, then sewn together again by hand. I attached the clip at the back and the ribbon was done. And now it's time for the fun part. It is. I already own a huge collection of beads from previous projects, so I only had to get a few missing parts. I used a special thread which is designed to make bracelets and started making my own jewellery. It was very time consuming and it took me quite a while to get all those beads fitting how I wanted. And as you can see it didn't always go according to plan. But with a bit of patience and a little bit of supervision, I managed to make something which I think is good enough. Bracelet done! I had a bunch of flowers from a different project, but they were the wrong color, so I decided to paint them instead of buying new ones. And I did exactly the same with my pink tones. I don't need to tell you it took hours to finish all these things, but after a while I managed to finish it all. And this is the final result.
was indeed a lot of fun making this video. And although I am the opposite of a stereotypical Barbie, I love wearing this dress. Remember that you can support me by getting the pattern for this dress or simply by clicking the like button. Thank you so much for watching and special thanks for my patrons for being there. I will be seeing you in the next adventure. Bye! You want?